Again, welcome to Introduction to Data Mining Course. In this lecture, we're going to discuss about summary statistics, and we are going to use the Aris data set uh, to explain it. So first, what is a data exploration? And the concept of data exploration is for us to, again, understand our data. So one of the tools we can use is, again, the summary statistics. For example, finding the central tendency, the average of the data set, if it's a quantitative data, or we can, most of the time, the most common method is visualizing the data so that we can see a pattern. So we may plot a graph using the data so that we may see if we have any pattern. So a preliminary exploration of the data to, is for us to better understand the characteristics of the data. Now, the key motivation of data exploration include helping to select the right tool for pre-processing or analysis. Now, if we understand our data, we understand the characteristics, the attributes, the size of the data, everything. This may lead us to be able to select the right tools for the data analysis process or even the data preparation process also. So making use of humans' abilities to recognize patterns. In this case, people can recognize patterns not captured by data analysis tools. So the best tool to use for, again, capture the patterns of the data is again using the data visualization techniques. So this is related to the area of uh, exploratory data analysis. Uh, it was created by John Toki, and John Toki wrote a textbook or a seminar book on exploratory data analysis by Toki. And a nice online introduction can be found in chapter one of the NIST Engineering Statistics Handbook. And again, that's the link over here. Yeah. John Tukey is one of the first statisticians that introduced the concept of exploratory data analysis and also the benefit of doing it. And we say that the most important is it make it possible for us to understand our data. So the idea of John Tukey is using visualization to again find a pattern in the data uh, for us to understand our data. So here we say the EDA, again, EDA stands for Exploratory Data Analysis. As originally defined by Tuki, the focus is on visualization. And cross-story and anomaly detection were also viewed as exploratory techniques. Because cross-story, you are looking into the, you are using an, an algorithm to look at the data. When we have a similar data, we are going to cross it together as one unit or one cluster. When we have two different types of data, then they will be in a different cluster. The same concept with the anomaly detection. We have a, a data set. If there's any value that is too small or too large or there's some behavior in the data set that is not common among the rest of the data, mostly very large or small values, this will be detected. So it's again, the process of doing anomaly detection is also using exploratory data analysis techniques. So in data mining, cross-story and anomaly detection are the major areas of interest and not thought of as just exploratory. We will get into those two algorithms in future lectures. So in our discussion of data exploration, we are going to focus on summary statistics and visualization, and also online analytical processing, which will be our next video uh, lectures. So in these lectures, we're going to focus on summary statistics and also visualization. So this is an array sample data set 
And this data set can be found in many areas online, many locations online. And here we find this data at UCI, Machine Learning Repository. Also at cargo.com, you can find this data set. Yeah, this data set is, we will say this data set is a training data set. We have a data set with four attributes about a flower. The flower, we have the sapere width and the length. And also we have the pater width and the length. So these are our non-class four attributes. Now our goal is to be able to classify whether based on the length and the width of the sapere and patel, we are going to classify whether the flower is setosa, venegica, and vesicola. So these three, setosa, virginica, vesicola, is the classes. That's what we are going to again classify based on the length, again, the width of sapere. And this data set was generated in 1995. So our summary statistics, we are going to focus on the central tendency, which is how to find the mean media mode. Then also the spread of the data, that's how the data varies. So we're going to find the range, variance, and standard deviation. So summary statistics are numbers that summarize the properties of the data. So summarized properties include the frequency, location, and spread. Frequency, we can use the frequency distribution table to organize. So our goal of a frequency is to organize the data. So we we'll say, okay, the tables that are red, we have 50. The tables that are blue, we have 20. So we organize it in a table, frequency table. The frequency will be the tally. So 50 is frequency. Location, we can find the central tendency of the data set. Example, finding the mean, median mode. Then the spread will be the, spread will be the variance, uh, how the data is varies. So most summary statistics can be calculated in a single pass through the data. So frequency and mode. Here we say frequency is counting how many items appear in a specific category. Let's say patients between the age of 40 to 50 years, we have 20 of them that smoke uh, cigarettes. So that would be a frequency. Or also it's a mode or a count. So a frequency of an attribute value is the percentage of time that the values occurs in the data set. So for example, given the attribute gender and a representative population of people, the gender female occurs about 50% of the time. So that would be the frequency. Now the mode of an attribute is the most frequent attribute value. So frequency tell us, uh, for example, let's go back to the patients. Let's say we have two categories. Patients between the age of 10 and 20, we have 70. Patient between the age of 21 and 30, we have, let's say, 100. Now, the two frequency, the two values, the amount of patients we have in the two categories is frequency. We have 70 and we have 100. Now, the mode will be the highest frequency or the highest tally. So if I have two categories of an item, the quantity frequency, one is 100, the other is 70, then the mode will be 100. So the mode is the highest uh, tally. We also can find a percenter. A percenter can tell us uh, how values distributed, maybe from zero to 100%. Let's say we may say that the 20, we have 25 percenter, which means 25% of the data is in top some value or below some value. 
So for continuous data, the notion of a percentile is more useful. Given an ordinal or continuous attribute x and a number p between 0 and 100, the p percentile is a value sp. So if it's 25 percent, then we're looking for the value of the top 25 percent of x, such that p percent of the observed value of x are less than the sp. Normally in statistics, we can find the uh, quotas also. Quotas can be Q1, Q2, Q3. Q1 means 25 percenter. It's quarter one. Quarter two is half, 50 percenter. Quarter three is 75 percenter. So for example, 50 percenter is the value at the media. So 50, 50th percenter is the same as finding the media. Because to find a media, we arrange all the values in a sorting order from smallest to the highest. Then we take the middle value. The middle value is the 50th percentile or the media also. So the measure of location mean and media, the mean is the most common measure of location of, of points. However, is the mean is very sensitive to outlines. The, what we mean by outlines is the value if it's very small or very large. Example, we have 10 people living in a village, a small town, and all of them are not working, except that we have, uh, let's say we have big gate with a multimillionaire live in that neighborhood. Now, if big gate make $100 million a year, and we say we are finding the mean salary of the people in that village. We have 10 people. The rest didn't make any money. They all zero, zero, zero. Only big get make 100 million, which means the average salary will be 10 million. But actually, big get amount is outlying data. It's a data that is too large compared to the rest of the data. So it affects the value of the mean. And so I will say, oh, 10 million average salary. So I'm going to leave going to the place to go and look for a job. But when you go there, nine, all the nine people are not working. They, they are on maybe on public assistance. They make zero income. Now, if we say we are finding the median, the answer will be zero. Because when we arrange the value in an increasing order from zero to 10, we have 10 items. This time, the, the highest value is uh, 100 million. So we get zero, zero up to nine, then the last value is 100 million. When we take the middle value, if the number of value is even number, we are going to get two middle values. The two middle values will be zero, zero. To when you find the average of the two middle values, you get zero plus zero divided by two, which will give us zero. So we can see that the median is a very good value. Median, we, normally when we are reporting data about economics, the labor income, we don't use the mean. We always use the media. So the formula to find the mean, we had all the values together, together, then we divide by the number of values. Now to find the media, we put the values in increasing order. If the number of values we have is a hold, we are going to get only one middle value. Uh, what I mean is that if the total values we have is seven, then the middle value will be the number fourth position. First, we put all the values in increasing order from lowest to the highest. Now, if the total number of value we have is 10, then we are going to get two middle values if it's even. Then after that, we find the average of the two middle values, how the two values divide by two. So we also mentioned about the measure of, of spread. The measures of spread is very important to understand our data. Now, if you have a data set and you measure the, the range or the variance or the standard deviation and your answer is zero, it means all the values have the same value, all the values are the same. So I have 10 people, they all make $90,000 a year salary the variance range and standard deviation always will be zero. 
So we use those range, variance, and standard deviation to measure the spread of the data. If the data are not spread, they are all the same, it's zero. If they are a little bit spread, the variance and range will be very small value. If it's larger spread, let's say we have a value 20, another value 100, another value 1,000. We have another value 20, another value 30, another value 40. 20, 30, 40 standard deviation will be smaller than 20, 100, 300. Because we can see the spread is wide for the 20, 300, and let's say 500. So to find the variance, what we do is that we, first of all, we find the mean of the whole data set. Then we subtract the mean from each value, we square it, then we add all together, then we divide by the number of values we have. Minus one means we are using a sample. If we are using population, we just divide by the number of population size. So this will be the conclusion of our lectures on exploratory data analysis. In this section, we just summarize everything on how to use descriptive statistics to understand our data, which is a summary statistics. We can use the mean to find the central tendency. If our data is a quantitative data, we can use the mean to know the central location of the data. The variance will tell us how the values are varies. We can also use, again, a plot visualization to see the pattern of our data. And we're going to cover most of this in the future lectures. So again, thank you for your time.